face, you're beautiful. You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful I see your face You're beautiful You're beautiful You're beautiful Just a memory and tears are no of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion with the Holy Spirit be with all of you. Stephanie and Patrick, the church shares your joy and warmly welcomes you together with your families and friends. As today in the presence of God our Father, you establish between yourselves a lifelong partnership. May the Lord hear you on this your joyful day, May he send you help from heaven and protect you. May he grant you your heart's desire and fulfill every one of your prayers. Glory to God in the highest and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who consecrated the bond of marriage by so great a mystery, that in the wedding covenant you foreshadow the sacrament of Christ and his church, grant, we pray, to these your servants, that what they receive in faith they may live out in deeds. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever kindly be seated for the readings. A reading from the book of Ecclesiastes. Two are better than one. They get a good wage for their toil. If one falls, the other will help the fallen. But woe to the solitary person. If that one should fall, there is no other to help. So also, if two sleep together, they keep each other warm. How can one alone keep warm? Where one alone may be overcome, two together can resist. A three-ply cord is not easily broken. The word of the Lord. Taste, 
from the first letter of St. John. Beloved, let us love one another because love is of God. Everyone who loves is begotten by God and knows God. Whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. In this way, the love of God was revealed to us. God sent his only son into the world so that we might have life through him. In this is love, not that we have loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son as expiation for our sins. Beloved, if God so loved us, we must also love one another. No one has ever seen God, yet if we love one another, God remains in us and his love is brought to perfection in us. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, As the Father loves me, so I also love you. Remain in my love. If you keep my commandments, you will remain in my love, just as I have kept my Father's commandments and remain in his love. I have told you this so that my joy might be in you and your joy might be complete. This is my commandment. Love one another as I love you. The Gospel of the Lord. You and I have gathered here today to witness the marriage of Stephanie and Patrick. We're here at St. Catherine's since the bride, to, to the bride is her hometown parish, where she worshiped, attended grade school, was an altar server, and participated in youth activities. Since she has received all of her other sacraments here, she desired to receive this sacrament also. Stephanie and Patrick have chosen readings for their wedding, which are rich in meaning for all of us. And I assume they also have some special and personal meaning to them, growing out of their romance or representing their hopes for their life together. We heard Sidney read from the book of Ecclesiastes. This little book of the Old Testament is a collection of wise sayings and proverbs. While most of these sayings are just good common sense, they contain sometimes subtle clues about God's involvement in our everyday lives. I call your attention to the final verse of this reading. When one alone may be overcome, two together can resist. A three-pi cord is not easily broken. A three-ply cord is not easily broken. I would use that symbol during my brief homily. I assume that two of the strands represent the two persons, Stephanie and Pat, that uh, would be two of the strands in that rope of strength. And while the proverbs and the sayings apply to all of us in our relationships, today we're focusing on this special relationship that Patrick and Stephanie are undertaking. In the reading that Olivia read from John's first letter about God's love being revealed to us, he said, whoever is without love does not know God, for God is love. I would uh, remind you that our culture and our language uses the word love in many, many ways, and most of which uh, would render this particular verse so sort of nonsense. For example, if I said, I love cheddar cheese, what I mean is I really like cheddar cheese. But if I put it in this teaching, it's going to sound somewhat foolish. Whoever doesn't like cheddar cheese does not know God. So God is cheddar cheese. So we're not talking about all those other kinds of love. We are talking about the kind of love that Jesus showed in coming as the Son of God uh, to tell us about love and about what the great God of love knows. 
And obviously, John, the writer of this gospel, and Jesus had a very precise meaning of the word love. John said, God's love was revealed to us when he sent his son into the world so that we might have life through him. So how did Jesus reveal this kind of love? Well, a life of teaching others, healing others, forgiving others, including us, and dying that we might have eternal life. It's this self-giving love that is the third strand in the rope bringing strength to the marriage covenant. Our gospel reading from John is quoting Jesus. This is my commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. Now this kind of love requires of us a decision. Such a decision is only possible if you and I are truly free. While I may be forced to, to go somewhere or even to do something, I cannot be forced to love in this way. I must choose to love this way. And it had been God's choice to love us as he does. In comparing the love of God for us as people to love of marriage, we see that God's idea is a love that never fails. However, one would, could conclude from our media and our movies and soap operas that the common sense of love often does fail, episode after episode. Even among our friends and family, we are pained and aware of the relationships that have failed. So what is this way of love that Jesus calls us to? Paul's letters make it clear that the way of love that never fails is love that is undertaken in the same way as God loves. One way to describe such a love is to say that for us, such love is a decision. That is, the love that, that we hope never fails requires an act of will. Stephanie and Patrick have come here today to publicly adopt a covenant that represents their individual and joint decision to grant each other such love. Why is such love a decision? Well, consider the alternatives we often hear about. It can't be an emotion. Emotions are too short-lived, and we know that you and I don't control them. Now, it can't be a contract either, which indicates a piece of paper which can be burned or lost. And it can't be something your friends or family can provide because it has to be something coming from within you. In a few minutes or in a moment, Steph and Pat will stand before you, and the first thing I will do is to challenge them to tell us that they have come here freely of their own choice, their own will, and that they understand what they are undertaking specifically that their covenant is for life and they are open to new life. In a sense, it is the last thing I will do because at that point, I am only helping them formalize their commitment to a lifelong way of self-giving love. The rest of us, you included, are called here as witnesses by the bride and groom your friendly testimony in the future about this day may be of great value to them when the hard times come in the future. Patrick and Stephanie, have you come here to enter your marriage without coercion, freely, and wholeheartedly? Yes. Are you prepared as you follow the path of marriage to honor and love each other? for as long as you both shall live. Yes. Are you prepared to accept children lovingly from God and to bring them up to the public according to the law of Christ and his church? Yes. Since it is your intention to enter the covenant of holy matrimony, join your hands in declares consent before the church and God. I, Patrick, take you, Stephanie, to be my wife. I promise to be faithful to you in good times and in bad, in sickness and health, 
to love and honor you for the rest of my life. Dear brothers and sisters, let us accompany this new family with our prayers, that the mutual love of this couple may grow daily, and that God in his kindness will sustain all families throughout the world. For this bride and groom, and for their well-being as a family, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For their relatives and friends, and for all those who have assisted this couple, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For young people preparing to enter marriage, and for all whom the Lord is calling to another state in life, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the families, for all families throughout the world, and for lasting peace among all people, let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all members of our families who have passed from this world, especially Francis, Albert, and Patricia Arcadia, Helen and Waldemar Olzeski, and Patricia Cairo, and for all of the departed. Let us pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Lord Jesus, who are present in our midst, as Stephanie and Patrick seal their union, accept our prayer and fill us with your spirit, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. to our supplications, O Lord, and receive with a kindly countenance the oblations we offer for these your servants, now joined in a holy covenant, that through these mysteries they may be strengthened in love for one another and for you, through Christ our Lord. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For you willed that the human race, created by the gift of your goodness, should be raised to such high dignity that in the union of husband and wife you might bestow a true image of your love. For those you created out of charity, 
you call to the law of charity without ceasing and grant them a share in your eternal charity. And so the sacrament of holy matrimony as the abiding sign of your own love consecrates the love of man and woman through Christ our Lord. Through him with the angels and all the saints we sing the hymn of your praise as without end we acclaim. Holy, holy, holy indeed holy O Lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that, partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world, and to bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, Nelson, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Be mindful also, Lord, of Stephanie and Patrick, whom you have brought to their wedding day, so that by your grace they may abide in mutual love and in peace. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, 
we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Please kneel. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. Have you come to the end of yourself? Do you thirst for a drink from the well? Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was brought with the precious blood of Jesus Behind your regrets and mistakes Come today, there's no reason to wait Jesus is calling Bring your sorrows and trade them for joy From the ashes new life is reborn Jesus is calling The precious blood of Jesus Christ was caught with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, what a Savior! Isn't He wonderful? Sing hallelujah! Christ is risen. Bow down.
benches around the table of the Lord, so God's children in his church. Grant, we pray, Almighty God, that the power of the sacrament we have received may find growth in these your servants, and that the effects of the sacrifice we have offered may be felt by us all through Christ our Lord. May the Lord Jesus, who graced the marriage at Cana by his presence, bless you and your loved ones. Amen. May he who loved the church to the end unceasingly pour his love into your hearts. Amen. May the Lord grant that, bearing witness to faith in his resurrection, you may await with joy the blessed hope to come. Amen. And may Almighty God bless all of you who are gathered here, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. May we go forth in joy over the new couple and new family. Thanks be to God. Oh, oh.